Hello everyone and welcome to this playwright tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn to implement the page update model. So let's begin. Now, what is page update model? So page update model is basically a design pattern and this design pattern is specifically used in the test automation to organize your test code. It will improve the maintainability of the code and it will reduce the code duplication as well. Okay. And let's now uh, learn more about the page update model here. So imagine like you know the web page as a building block okay so page of a model let you create a separate blueprint for each block and those blocks are known as page objects these blueprints contain instructions on how to interact with the elements on that page you can then use these blueprints to build your test cases like you know assembling the blocks together okay and for example, you will be creating a blueprint for the login page and this blueprint will find the username, password fields, find the login button, type in username and password and then click on the button. Now, we will be using this blueprint in the test to tell the test to use this login page blueprint. Tell it to fill the username and password, then click login. And after that, you can also check either you will be successfully logged in or not. So that's how actually this blueprint and page update pattern works. Now uh, let's see how things will work if you don't use the page update model. Okay. So basically you are logging into the application, you're writing your test cases. So logging into the application, then you are going to the admin page, testing the admin page, and then you're logging out. This is your test one. Then again, your second test. You are logging into the application, you are going to the leave module, testing the leave module and logging out. And in the same way, you are writing the 100 test cases. Now, there are multiple problems here. The first problem here is that the code repeatability. You see that login is repeatable, logout is repeatable, right? So, so we are repeating the code, right? And tomorrow, if there are 100 other test cases and you are repeating the code, in this particular scenario, if there is a change, for example, there is a change in the login here, okay, then you need to go to those 100 test cases and you need to update. So, you know, the problem of maintainability here, okay. So, the problem of maintainability, code reputation, and there's no reusability because we are repeating the code. So, repeating the code, no uh, reusability problem in maintaining the code if they see in the application right so if you use the pay update model then what how and how actually this will solve the problem here so basically you will create the page objects the blueprints which we talked about earlier right now okay so you will create the login uh, you know field elements and their actions then you will create admin page elements actions same goes for the logout and same goes for the any functionality, any page in the application. Okay. And then you would be calling those functionalities actually into your test. Okay. So your test will actually call those, uh, you know, elements and actions from those objects here. And here tomorrow, if there's, you have written 100 of test cases and these hundreds of test cases are actually calling these which are written once. So write once, so you will be re reuse them into your multiple test cases, right? And here, if tomorrow, if there is any change in the code for, for example, the login, so you just need to go to this page objects and fix the problem. And if you are using this login into the 100 test cases, it will automatically be replicated because those test cases are not actually, you know, having this code, they are calling this one. So that's how actually the design pattern works. Now let's see it practically and get more understanding in the practical terms. Okay. So, uh, let me open the Visual Studio code here and let me go here and run. Yep. Now, uh, for this example, I will be using the Orange RM demo website here and I will be, you know, I will be creating a page of design pattern for this login test case here. Okay. Simply. Now, uh, when we talk about the page objects, what we need to do is that on the root folder, on the root directory, 
we need to create a folder here. I will call it as a pages. So inside this one, I will be creating a page or the blueprint which we talked about and this and I will use those blueprints in my test. Okay. So inside this, I will creating a new file and I'm naming it as login underscore page dot js. Okay. And here, what I first I need to do is that I need to create a class and I will pass the page fixture to that class and constructor will utilize that page to initialize my locators. Okay. So, and also I need to use this in my test cases. So I will need to export this one. Okay. So I will start with, you know, export dot. And now here I need to give a name of the class, which I need to export. So login page. And now this is equals to, now I will create a class. So class will be the same name as login page because this is a class which I need to, you know, export. So export means that it will be, you know, inherited into the other, you know, uh, other pages and other tests. Okay. Now, what I need to do is that I need to create a constructor. Constructor will initialize those changes. Okay, the constructor and I will pass the page fixture inside this one. Okay, and now here is the constructor body. So what I will say that using the this keyword, this dot page is equals to page. And now I need to identify the elements. So this dot username. And I will say this is a username import equals to and here I will, uh, you know, having the page locators like page dot locator and here I need to provide a locator. So if I go back here and right inspect this one and here. So, so I'm using the XPath or CSS. So that's why I'm using the page dot locator. So you can use directly the very right locators as well. Simply I will copy this one from here and go back here and paste it here. In a similar way, I will copy this one and paste this one here instead of, you know, username. I will say it as a password and I will go here. I will inspect this password here and this is my password. So let me copy this one from here and paste it here. So this is a locator of the password and the third thing is that I need to click on the login button. So I need to identify the login. Okay. I simply go here and instead of this one, I will say login button, login button and the locator of the login button here. So let me go back here and let me inspect this login. And this is the locator. Let me copy this one and paste it here. Now I have identified these locators and I know that these are my locators and these are initialized to the constructor and constructor is using the page fixture. Okay. Now this is done. Here, what else I can do? I can create a function. Okay. Function will actually go to the application instead of, you know, providing the hard coded value here, like uh, this one or this one page dot go to. So what I do is that because we are creating a blueprint, so I will create a function and that function will actually open the application. So async and I name it as go to and this go to will be actually going to the application. So await this dot page dot and page dot go to and it will go to the page which is the RHRM login page. So let me copy this one from here and let me paste it. So I will just call this function and it will redirect to this particular page. Now I have uh, located the elements which are basically belongs to login page and also, I've created a one function which will actually, uh, you know, take to you this particular website. Now, the third thing is that I need to create a function 
that function will actually be you know inserting a value or it will you know pass the username password and it will click on the login button okay so async and i will name this function as login and this function will take two arguments username and password so when we are calling this one so we need to provide the username and password okay and now here where we need to provide the password so await this dot you see that username so this username is basically referring to this particular locator so either i can write this complete here or just you know calling this one here so await this dot username or input and what i need to do i need to fill right and what i need to fill i need to fill a username so on the runtime when i actually call this function we need to provide the username at that time okay so yeah, let me copy this one and be this one here so instead of this one so this dot password input and here i will say okay you need to provide a password and the third thing is that we need to click okay so await then this dot login button and we need to simply click on the login button okay now we have created our page object right this is a blueprint which will be copy so if i go back to my this thing so what i did is that i created the page object and their actions okay for the login and now when i will write a test case i will just call here in my test cases that's what i need to do and now to maintain the hierarchy i created the pages uh, folder here where we have the all the pages and their locators available okay now uh let me create the test inside this test one okay and uh, let me name it as login form dot spec dot js okay and the first thing is that we need to use this import because uh without this we will not be able to write the tests and here simply i will say test and here name of the test i will say login to orange and charm and this will actually follow comma async and the callback function a sync and it will followed by a you know page fixture and and this page is basically coming from the uh, this particular constructor okay so here we are passing the page feature here and followed by the arrow function or the callback function okay and here now simply what i need to do is that i need to create an object of the this particular login page in order to use this one i need to create an object so how to create an object i will say const login um page equals to new and the name of the class login page and we need to pass a page function and that's it so we have created this one and now what i need to do is that simply await and i will say login page dot you see that uh, i need to call the functions only i need to call the functions so page login page dot so we have a function called go to this go to is basically uh, will be coming from here so we are calling this function so this function will actually open the application into the browser so we are calling this function okay and now i need to call this uh, async login function and here simply await login page dot the name of function is login and here you see that it says that you need to provide the username and password here so this is really simple i will say admin and comma 
and you put the password and the password is i believe admin one two three yes admin one two three so here i go in admin one two three that's it your, your task is ready this is really simple we created a blueprint here and we use this one and tomorrow if there's any change for example if the locator has been changed you just go here and update the locator and where However, this particular login function is used, it will be automatically be updated, right? So we are reusing the code. Maintainability is easy and there's no repetition of the code. Instead, it makes your code and test case is pretty much clear and very precise in nature. Okay. And now uh, let's run this test case and px play write test minus g and the name of test is login2 orange hna this is the name of the test and i will be using the edit mode here okay i see what happens so it's running our test and we got some failures the reason of the failure is that it is unable to find the object Whenever you need to create an object, you need to import the class here. So basically, what I need to do is that I need to, just like we are importing the playwright, so we can also import uh, this login. That's why it is unable to find this one, right? Here, Excel. So in order to, you know, import this one, uh, simply there are multiple ways for import. If I go, uh, and let me show you before that let me show you exactly we are doing as per the session of the playwright team so go to the docs here and go to this uh, page object page object model and here you see that they they have actually exported this class they have created a constructor and they have located the elements here then again created a go to function for you know go to this particular website and different functions in order to perform on that particular for the different test cases and here you see that in this example test they are calling this right they are calling this particular playwright dev because this is the class the page of the class and they are actually calling this one here so let me copy this one from here and let me paste um, this my test so here's a test and here i need to so my class is basically this login page right and i need to provide a url so double dot slash forward slash go i will go to the pages so inside the pages i have this login page now let me save this one now this time it should work so let me run this one again and see what happens so now it is going to the application and it will once it will open it will provide the username and password and click on login and you see that our test case is passed so in this way you will be creating your page objects inside the pages and you will be calling those blueprints into your test thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial